Hello, everyone. This is Sharon Heller with Network in Action, and I'm here today with Karen Albert from Behind Your Curtain. Hi, Karen. Hi, Sharon. Great to be here. Thanks for joining me this morning. My pleasure. So Karen is an expert all things social media, which um, I'm going to give you some opportunities to talk about. And You know, one question that um, comes up often when I'm talking to small business owners is, do I really need to do social media? And how would you respond to that question? Is it really important? Is it really going to help my business? Yeah, I get that question a lot as well. Um, And, you know, I mean, obviously, me being a social media coach and trainer, (laughs) I think we all know what my answer is going to be, which is uh, yes, and definitely. But I'll like kind of unpack that answer a little bit um, to help them really realize why it's important. Um, So one is, if we take a step back and recognize what's happening right now, in this current day and time, is there is unprecedented amounts of individuals that are on social media right now. Facebook is reporting um, unprecedented usage simply because of the fact that people are still expected to stay home and limit their outdoor and you know socializing. And a lot of businesses have people that are still working from home. Uh, and so it's such an incredible opportunity to consider that you have these eyeballs that are now even though we've always had the eyeballs, but now we really have the eyeballs. Um, And these platforms are free. So not only do you have an opportunity to use these platforms to get in front of a demographic that is much higher than ever, they are, there's no cost in using these particular tools. Um, You know, but I will tell you that the majority of the time when business owners Uh, express their concern or frustration around social media, it's because they, they, they say, yeah, Karen, you know what, I've tried it. And I just don't feel like I've seen any return on my efforts. I feel like I get in there and it's a time suck, right? I've lost four hours and I'll never get back and I have nothing to show for it. Uh, And then they say, I'm busy. I've got a business to run. And how in the world am I going to incorporate now adding on social media on top of everything else that I have going on. Um, And I totally agree with all of that because the reason why they're probably experiencing that is because they're missing two things. One is they don't have a strategy in place and they don't have the basic simple step-by-step instructions that they can follow that keeps them guided, keeps them focused so that they know how much time they should commit on a daily basis to their social media. And as a result of that, what they should expect from that, you know, checking off the daily tasks list. And I think this applies to pretty much anything in our life, right? We could just try it and see what happens or we can actually get strategic and focused and um you know uh have, feel like we can be a lot more proactive in our efforts than reactive which is what we can definitely find ourselves doing when it comes to social media is being very reactive because the minute you log into something like facebook <clears throat> you're being given so much information that we are like wait, do I like this? Should I comment? Am I supposed to share? Do I just keep scrolling? I mean, there's all these things that we are uh, prompted to respond to and be reactive. And so it really is sort of, okay, I'm not going to look at that right now. I'm going to look at my tasks (laughs) and I'm going to be proactive. And then if you want to spend time being reactive, then that's entirely up to you. But we have to sort of turn off that shiny object uh, for a moment. Um, And then, you know, the other reason, too, why so many small business owners get frustrated with it is because they tell me that, you know, well, I have a Twitter account and I don't know what in the world I'm supposed to tweet. And then I've got, you know, a YouTube channel and, you know, I I don't feel like I can produce enough videos. And then I'm on this platform and that platform. And so they just sort of feel the pressure of feeling like they have to be on every single platform 
platform and active on every social media platform. And I am never going to be the one that's going to tell you that you have to be on every single platform, because to me, that's just sort of an effort in futility. Like, let's put you on the platform that's going to get you in front of the demographic that has the highest demand for what it is that you have to offer. And that's really my job. That's why clients hire me is to help them craft the strategy. And the big part of the strategy is identifying the most appropriate and effective social media platform. So, you know, most of my clients, um, as you know, probably about 80 of my clients are real estate professionals. Mm -hmm. Um, The majority are agents. I also do help lenders and uh, people that are entitled, people that kind of work in the real estate industry. Um, But about 20% of my clients uh, fall into all the other kind of buckets. Um, But, you know, if we kind of focus on the different platforms, when we look at who are you trying to attract, if you're telling me that you're wanting to attract a, you know, individuals that are your sort of traditional consumer, um, the moms or the older people or the, you know, the ones that, especially for real estate agents, you know, if you're wanting the downsizers or the ones that are relocating or the first time home buyers or um, just consumers in general, um, Facebook and Instagram are probably the, the two platforms that we work on the most, I would have to say, like in the highest percentage. Um, If you tell me that you have a a strong desire to put your brand and attract professionals, so if you want to work with accountants or lawyers or doctors, um, then we're going to make sure that we've got LinkedIn in there as well. Um, And not to say that LinkedIn wouldn't work Uh, blended in nicely with Facebook and and Instagram, because there are ways that even though your ideal consumer that you want to attract might be the moms and the dads and the families, but you can definitely leverage LinkedIn, as you know, (laughs) um, to uh, find other businesses that might already have a relationship with the consumer. So you're using it more as like a networking type of a tool, like a lead generating type of a tool, working on that business to business relationship. Um, You know, where YouTube comes into play is there's two reasons why people go onto YouTube. They either want to learn how to do something or they want to be entertained. So unless you're pumping out a bunch of videos that fall into either one of those categories, it's not bad to have a YouTube channel. You can use that as a repository for all of your videos, but just be realistic about what you should expect. It's not going to be a lead generating tool for you. It is so difficult to cut through all of the noise and the competition that's going on in YouTube to expect that to be a channel that's going to actually generate for you. Now, that not to, that's not to say that there are some very effective strategies that a lot of YouTube experts teach that if you really wanted to take a deep dive and invest in putting together a whole strategy with landing pages and call to actions and email campaign and all of that, it can work for you, but I'm the, let's, let's get you a strategy that's going to help you spend this much time on it. So you actually see some return on your efforts and then you can go on your day and actually make some money. Right. Uh So I'm all about, let's, let's really take the deepest dive into the ones that are going to get you the biggest return on your efforts. So that's why YouTube to me is sort of, um, uh, yeah, you could have it and you can use it as a repository, but let's be realistic. And then when it comes to Twitter, you know, Twitter has really become more of a information source versus uh, one where you're going to, again, are you going to show up in front of that? Uh, Unless you are in sports, (laughs) unless you want to connect with media, unless you're, it's a very male, predominantly male dominant um, community. uh, And unless you are really wanting to get in front of that particular demographic and you, or you just love Twitter and that's, and you're on there as a, it's just something personally that you really appreciate. Mm -hmm. But again, it's all like, let's be realistic. Like, what are you really going to get as a result of that? It's so difficult now. I mean, maybe if you started in the beginning, Uh right. 
and you now you're kind of considered a uh, an influencer in the Twitter community. But now it's it's just it's so challenging. But that's why I love Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Those are probably the two primary ones that I am still able to generate some real results and returns from my clients and using those platforms. But it's all about having the strategy. And that's like, that's step one. We have to craft that strategy for you. So a big piece of that is knowing which platforms to focus on. And then the other big piece is who do you want to attract as a result of, because you know, you've heard me speak before and you just cannot use social media to try and get in front of anybody and everybody. And, you know, anybody who has a pulse is a big answer that I usually get when I ask that question is who's your ideal client, you know, um, especially for real estate agents, you know, and uh, it's just not the way it works. You have to get really clear on who let's, let's just focus on a very specific type of niche. And let's really help you get in front of them, start to show up so that you can show up in search engine results. The algorithm is actually working for you and not against you, which is what happens when you're trying to be everything, you know, to everybody in using those platforms. Um, and so that's a pretty long answer <laughs> to that single question. Um but I kind of, I did, I would sort of just unpack that a little bit because yes, you should be on there, but let's just kind of explain why. So yeah, no, it's great. Yeah. That was great. Very thorough. And so let's say I have my two platforms that I'm using mm -hmm. and so I'll say for myself, it's LinkedIn and Facebook. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to steal too many of your trade secrets, but what are just a couple of things that I better be sure I'm doing every day um, to be able to have that momentum and actually sure. see some return there? Yeah. So, you know, it, it all goes back to um, the understanding of who it is that you're wanting to attract. So if we're looking at Facebook, for example, majority of the time when you're wanting to attract someone on Facebook, it, that's going to be a potential consumer. So um, one of the things that you definitely want to make sure that you're doing, there's two primary goals when you're using your Facebook business page is marketing to those that know about you. So that's producing content that's going to add value, right? But it's producing in content that's going to add value to the consumer. We have a tendency of pushing out content on our page that's kind of all about us all day long, right? right. So um, what we think what we need want. to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so exactly. Right. And then they get frustrated, right? Because we're like, nobody's responding, nobody's engaging. And you know, it's like tree falls in the woods kind of a scenario. Uh, and so it really is about putting content out that is going to be of a greater interest to who you're trying to attract. Mm -hmm. And then the second is marketing to those that don't know about you yet. So how do you get in front of those that, that you want to attract, but they just don't know about you. And the best way to do that is kind of Find again, going back to let's get really clear on the who and then figure out where do they hang out in Facebook? What are the business pages and private groups that cater to that demographic? And then showing up in those pages and those groups as your business, not as you as the individual Facebook user, and showing up consistently so that you are uh, commenting and engaging on those other posts that are that are being posted in their private groups and the business pages. And even if you go to business pages that have uh, worked on creating the community that you also want to get in front of mm -hmm. and engaging with who's commented on those posts, the chances are they're right in your, in your niche, right? That's mm -hmm. so um, we have a tendency of doing just sort of the first half. We push a bunch of stuff out and then we sort of sit back and keep our fingers crossed and <laughs> you know, hope someone sees it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but another really powerful way is to make sure that you're also showing up in front of where, like go to their watering hole, right? right? Like show up, it's not just about like, let me just push stuff out and see what sticks. Um, so those are two things you definitely want to be doing on a consistent basis in Facebook. And then in LinkedIn, it's not that different, quite honestly, because again, you do want to be putting content out that's going to be relevant to who you're wanting to attract.
attract, but the attraction, the who you're wanting to attract might be a little different in LinkedIn. Like I was saying earlier, is that um, if you, uh, let's say that, you know, again, you the consumer really aren't professionals, then you want to look to finding the other professionals that cater to your your niche already. Uh, so, you know, for me, because I do work with a lot of realtors, I look to obviously connecting with realtors there, but I also look to connecting with lenders and escrow and title, right? Anybody that already has a relationship with the realtors and connecting with them um, on a consistent basis saying, hey, you know, um, I see that we basically so the support the same type of of uh, customer. Mm-hmm. I'd love to learn more about your business and, you know, ultimately, hopefully get it to a phone call. You can't do the coffee so much anymore, but that's a, you know, another really great strategy of consistently um, putting the information out to those that know about you, but then also working to get more of those that, that don't know about you. So if you could kind of think about, you know, let me do some of these steps for those that know about and then those that don't know about if you can do that on a consistent basis that's really where you'll start to see a shift in the the effectiveness of what you're doing on a daily basis in those platforms great thank you so much i always learn a lot every time i hear from you and just get re-inspired to to stay consistent um because I, well, I'm glad I, to hear that because you've heard yeah. me speak a lot. That's right. <laughs> Starting to work its way in. Um, so, Karen, if somebody is ready to get some strategic help with social media or they want to learn more, what's a great way for them to reach out and get in touch with you? Yeah, thank you. So, um, behindyourcurtain.com is my website, and they can go on there and write at the the right on the homepage at the top, there's a opportunity for them to schedule a consultation call with me. So we chat, I learn a little bit about their business and, you know, kind of help them to get some clarity on um, things that they could be doing. And if they want to take it a step further and work with me one-on-one, I have a 30 day program that my clients go through and, uh, you know, pretty much go in and we kind of take their social media pages from zero to hero, basically. (laughs) Uh, And, but it's all a part of the strategy, right? So we, we, uh, we unpack that strategy step one, and then we uh, identify the best social media platforms for us. My team then goes in and basically gives those social media platforms a complete facelift. So we'll make them look really good to the eyeballs looking at them. We feed the algorithm. They start to show up in search engine results. And then I teach them through uh, weekly Zoom calls how to then use these strategically. Like a lot of what I was saying, like how do you find the other pages and how do you find the groups and how do you find the other uh, professionals on LinkedIn? And But the analogy I like to use is <clears throat> let's clean the house before we invite the party guests. So you don't want to start just like, you know, pulling back the curtain just yet. Let's uh, let my team get in there and make it look really good and attractive. Uh, So when people do come to your social media pages, they're pretty impressed with what they see. And you're just sort of making it easier for them to make a decision about wanting to work with you. So behindyourcurtain.com is the best way for anybody to connect with me. Great. Thank you, Karen. And really, um, I've had firsthand experience of your 30 day (laughs) facelift and and know the the impact and the results from it. So highly recommend that some folks reach out to you. Thank you really so much for your time today. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you. Yeah, you're welcome.